Okay, once again, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Cod Community of Metrolayers. Oh, you can say anything you like. At this day, it's pretty awesome to everyone. This is playoff semi-final animation. As you know, it's best of fun. So, who we'll come out on top today? We'll go into forward into the grand final game. The best of seven, the game everyone waiting for. So, coming up with me, it's me, Kane. Well, oh, so my internet right bad. It's my internet bad. Okay, let me you see. just cut out. <laughs> my bad. Anyway, sometimes it's like one thousand things, but don't worry. New internet is so weird. Anyway, ah, uh, so our stream of today is lunch ball. It's me, the host came out. We're coming up with uh, Paranut and G Five. By the way, so Paranut, what do you think about team tonight? Who's gonna be like, you know, in your opinion, give us something. I am I'm very excited for this one. Uh, the last game we saw between Big Goge and All Clock was a fantastic game. Uh, and every map was really close. I think Big Doge do have the edge here. They are undefeated so far in this tournament. Um, however, All Clock absolutely have a chance to uh, take it through to the finals, and I'm looking forward to how this goes in this best of five series. Yes, awesome. When, in my opinion, two teams working together so much for. The tournament they are improving so much so gfan what do you think like in your opinion who are going to come out on um, this map i still well? think of course big dodge are going to win they are undefeated for a reason but there were multiple times that they do drop maps so all clock definitely can show us something here um once again maintaining an undefeated streak is not easy as well because you know when you are the top team there's not many practice partners you can go for to to improve yourself whereas everyone else that's not as good as you will play against you and improve their play so ultimately maintaining an undefeated streak as the number one team is a difficult job and we'll see how, how well big doge can hold out here yeah that's great um i just watching like how the highlight from big doge uh player i think they need to watch out not just only the dgs but also the tank let's talk about ram so look at the team com of big doge tonight Ram with his Renhop is really insane. He have the Earth Shadow, like, holy crap, like five men and three men in the last map. It's absolutely insane in my opinion. Also, this given with the play, I think he can have a reaction to the play. He will clutching that and also get in like, pretty great. Also, in the other hand, that dual DPS from Big Doe is really something we need to watch out. So that's my opinion. What do you guys think about Big Doe and how about Team Com from Outlook? It's okay. Let G Fan, you are the coach and you're a commander today. What do you think Big Doe gonna come out with? with? Uh, I don't really know. Really, I showed them what they should be doing. Whether or not they follow what I say is up to them. Ultimately, there are a few times that they don't. Uh, most of those come from the hours given, coming up <laughs> with these weird strats that never worked <laughs> uh, let's just hope that they don't repeat this mistake or else i'm gonna go shout at them yeah that's that's the thing like pretty great um from up clock with the team con i think the player who pretty get most signing from now is from the sport elementic see working so hard like despite she have less time for playing but she commit to the tournament and get everything done strong out her play yeah. with the song brand stuff pretty good like in the jungle tower when they do the rematch i'm pretty impressed with that so that's no kind of thing remember to watch out for twinks he is the highest ranked player on all clock and he's shown us that it does mean something uh he has been putting out so much damage and doing so much work for the team pulling out all the clutch plays uh we can see why he has actually hit masters before as well which puts him on actually an level completely different to the rest of the players in this tournament however we do see multiple other players in the tournament that are much lower rank and can somehow keep up with him so i'm really surprised and i think that's one thing that makes this tournament really fun to watch uh not only from big doge but also from teams like draconix and especially brutalhood uh, i can't wait to see that in this week it's gonna be so good they have like one week to study you guy here so this is a very good thing for them um okay the game gonna Get ready now, and we're gonna hit up with Nepal, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Nepal. We're loading in now. Um, draw everyone. Control map. Traveling to Nepal. Here. Um, we will be 
starting in village. So this is one map. Alright, here we go into village. And uh, it's gonna be interesting to see what we see from the team comps at the moment of course. Uh, oh Pyro, what happened to your mic? Yeah, what happened, Milo? I don't know. It's uh, I will try and talk up a bit more. That's. Uh... I think you need to go and adjust your mic and let me handle this for a bit until you're back. <laughs> Not a problem. Here we go. Let's go to Nepal. Chief, what do you think? All right, we have village here. This is a good map that actually people like to run pharmacy on, especially at the start, because the general strategy is to take the high ground and run on the top. However, with the pharmacy, if the opposing team doesn't actually come through the doors fast enough, they take so much collateral damage, which sets up an easy early dive for the team with the pharmacy versus the team that doesn't have it. So if it does come down to the pharmacy versus pharmacy, which we don't seem to have here, uh, it's about which team can move Five, together as a four, team fast enough and three, walk out of the choke. Two, one. Round one. So here, Capture I think this first fight will be up to whether Ch the L is given can land a damage boosted rocket onto one of the squishies from the side of All Clark. Or can All Clark find an easy target to jump first? Oh, here we have DMT going in. The Amir going to harass the pharmacy. DMT is in a low, dropping dangerously low. He gets taken down. DMT down early, but on the back foot. And they already Big Doja start. Which Doja are pushing the advantage into the room. They managed to pick up another deep boost sack. Pick up two stacks, and now they uh, they go rotate to take the point. That was just a that was a too rushed of a jump by DMT. <coughs> DMT once again jumps again, and oh, the entire team of all clock have managed to move forward together. Now we have a really close to fight. DMT is getting very low. Squid is getting really low as well. Oh, and the rocket pops, but every other hit wrong. And all clock are just lacking target focus. If we look at the health bars more closely, every fight that's begun, members from the side of all clock have been getting focused down, whereas no one on Big Doge has yet to drop below half health. Early. Alright, we're coming close to some ults, so both teams are about to get multiple ults. There's ult being popped. Three ults from the side of Big Doge. And they managed to secure themselves this fight win. And this is really good for Big Doge right now because Liami is actually D mech and he doesn't have that mech back, so that's multiple. Oh, seconds oh, off the clock. Squidgy pops the speed drop for some reason as all clock move on to the point. Chainsaw gets the Mega Twins, pulls that Dragon Blade. And they may have a chance here. Kill speed so far is very much in favor of all clock. They all clock have taken the point. Uh, and the good thing for all clock is they only use two ultimates here and they're about to have all four of the other ones. On the side of Big Dash, however, they're only close to three. And I think for the, at this point, um, next fight is most likely going to go to all clock if they play this right. Uh, however, a big dodge can actually dry run this and fade out multiple ults. Yeah, well, it's going to be interesting to see how it goes because DMT has gone over to the Roadhog, so they're going for a base comp. The evil comes in from the enemy, doesn't manage to pick up the kill. Squidgy is direct rocket the while he's immediately killed up. Cheetah's pulse form was actually eaten. That's just like that. Chainsaw is cooked. And Squidgy drops. Drops on the Fight is underway. They commit a coalescence. It does cause Big Doge to back off slightly. That was getting coming in. Picks up the Twinks. If you look at the HP part once again, it's just in favor of Big Doge at this point. There's a very good rocket barrage there. And I think Big Doge has just secured this point once again. And, uh, we uh, what? Now at 80%, there's really only going to be one fight left for all clock to uh, take this and one back for the round. In fact, this might not even be one fight at the rate all clock is moving at. The Twix is just taking out again, and Demon Bomb comes in from Chainsaw. Doesn't pick up any kills, but all clock really have to run at the point, really stagger as well. And they've, come in, they've, they've come in very staggered, of course, they're already one player now. A very dangerous position here. Uh, around the rock, taking out two seconds. Got good for them. They've been doing it. Uh, the kills are definitely coming in for the coach here. Roll on the point sound. Uh, as Warclock try and keep this one in, but DMT goes down the chainsaw. 
which means Elementing's going down as well. It's all over. Part of the cleanup. There goes Squidgy. And it's just Liamy now on the point, desperately trying to save me out. But that self destruct is going to be in here. Absolutely. And that's it. That first round goes. Round. goes that last play was really clean my big though. She was 80 seconds on the clock left. All Clock had to make a decision of where they were going and move at the squad. They can't afford to lose any more members and they have to make sure they're all moving with the Lucio to make it actually to the point in time without staggering. And that's one thing they weren't able to do. So Big Doge, not only did they have man advantage and positional advantage because All Clock was staggered, they also had ult advantage. Uh, all Clock came into that fight with one tactical visor that was popped and got no value, whereas Big Doge did have three ults and I think a fourth one halfway through that fight as well. And that was just, there was just nothing off I could have done there. Yeah, when you lose uh, one of your DPS before you've even got that final push, it puts you in a very one. bad spot. Round two, capture the objective. Moving here into the Sanctum. Hello. It's interesting that the Ellis are still oh. on this Baron. Oh, I like this. I like this because with the pharmacy, they can actually still execute the dive. They're able to spam a few rockets. And what I like, oh, oh. Find out good, he's taken down off straight out of the sky. Levy goes straight into that pharma and takes it out. At the same time, Cheetah goes down to twins. I was like, kills are still rolling in. Cheetah gets the res from Jay, and so all clock are in a difficult position here. And uh, yes, they are backing out. They're backing back to spawn. See, the Pharah and had just had so much impact right now. Uh, Big Doge managed to all spread out together and be able to dive in at the same time without taking collateral from Kusak. And the boof just took him straight out and All Clock lost a huge amount of their damage. As well as the Pharah rockets just in general putting down so much pressure and Big Doge going in. Uh, All Clock was already had multiple members low before they even engaged. And that's why the Pharah is actually really strong here against this type of comp. Chainsaw was in a bit deep, uses the Diva Bomb, doesn't get any kills. However, DMT is isolated, and at this point if they focus DMT, they can easily get nice boost coming out of NRG, takes down DMT. Yeah, it was a really good move by Big Doge there to move in and support Chainsaw. When Big Doge is still pushing forward, they managed to get the D mech, and that's another stagger, the MES is jumping off the map. Chainsaw. So we have both Divas resetting. Uh, let's look about ults. Big Doge are about to have five ults, whereas all clock are only have one and they're close to another three. So that's a four to five ult advantage. So now it's just about which team actually manages to get value from their ult. Bomb coming out of the enemy doesn't get any kills. Uh, well, that was given a on Good Valkyrie coming out of JP. Ooh, the Ooh, and Bramber and CMT down into the depths. Yeah, yeah, so that's the spot. And Liamy almost knocked off as well. Loses the mech. Uh, even though Elementix is committed. Squidgy is on the point alone. Very difficult. Sam Barry committed Sanbury. by Big Dunn. Uh, we still do this have still looks like a any this fight could still go on any team's favor. It's a four on three at this point. Also about the connect with the bomb coming in. Chainsaw gets the ring back. Still brawling out on the point, but it's over time now. Absolutely. That's a really long distance barrage. We've managed to get a mix. But Shasidas comes in with Switchy. Try to keep the MP alive, but will it be enough to get Switchy and the Big Dose still here? This is a 6 v 4 2 Yep, he's pulled him out and died almost immediately. That was just a clean get around by Big Doge. They're certainly showing their dominance on these uh, brawly control maps. Play of the game. <laughs> Chainsaw they can play at the game for a couple of other people. Classic deal. Okay, that's oh wow, that's that's a good plan five from Big Doe to be honest. Now everyone gonna have like five minutes for both teams for like talking about the next map. It's gonna be the Westbound Girota. We're having a brief break there. You can...
chance to confer with their coaches and if there's anything that needs to be cleaned up, tightened up, or improved. So what do you think, like, that's performance from Trick Girl, like, really strong. Like, really, really strong. They come out with the fire out like Bahrain and the direct hit is really accurate. With, like, giving the DBF from Outlook really hard time to catch up. And there will be in, like, a situation like 5v6. That's from my view so far. What do you think, Paro? Oh, I think the big difference here is just the tank play. Um, big Doge's tanks have been a lot cleaner and closer. Uh, they've been working together with the rest of the team a lot better. It's been creating the space for the rest of the members of Big Doge to be able to clean up these fights. Whereas Definitely. All Clark seems to have had a bit of a disconnect with their tanks and the rest of the team, uh, and they just they haven't been getting results uh, due to that. Yeah, we see DMT often alone and deep behind Big Doge, where the rest of his team are lacking behind. So as a result, all clocks backline don't get the protection they need, and DMT doesn't get the support he needs as well. And Big Doge is just in a better position. I I think, however, for all clock, if they picked up their own pharmacy, it might have worked out better since the Alice Given does have this habit to take the Farad deals because he's a really proud DPS player, and. If All Clock does, did have a, pharma, a pharmacy and they shot the ground, the Alice Given is likely to shoot them. So as a result, they actually get more value from the ground fights. And that's what we've seen happen quite often when both teams are running pharmacy deals. So it'll be interesting to see if All Clock can actually pick up their own pharmacy and try to push this advantage. Yeah, in my view so far, like, uh, let's get one with a pharmacy work out really good even we all know that mercy got a big nerve but she's still usable for this map like really huge that's a very well played from that team alpha at the moment i believe they are working on some strategy to counter the whole thing but in watch point to rota we expect gonna see more genji is it uh personally i'd actually expect to see much more hits can be played on gibraltar because for the defending side it's such a good there's high ground ledges on every single part of this map, and it's just the most perfect position to hold if you have a good Soldier 76 player or something along the sorts. Um, since it's all about scaling verticality and high ground, uh, the importance of dive tanks also shows here, so I doubt we'll see lots of Ryan, Zarya, or Sahog type of things. It's mostly just the uh, Winston Diva. Um, so yeah, one deciding factor will be which team has the superior hitscan type player, but it also has to do with the opposing team being able to dive together to shut down the hitscan player holding the high ground. So Big Doge does have Sheeta playing that hitscan. He has proven to be pretty consistent on that character. So whether all Cluck can pick up their team play and shut him down against the defense from the rest of Big Doge for Sheeta is going to be a determining factor of the attack defense and for the attack we'll have to see how Big Doge can keep their dives that they just showed us again they can maintain it uh, they should be able to take this map as well no respect to me well both team I believe they all have their silver weapon and this map I thought they need to pull it out they need to get this one on for the team to keep the spot for the tree. Okay, only yeah, one minute left. What do you think? I think we can expect to see Twinks on his Genji. It is probably the most played hero. Um, and yeah, as Yifang mentioned, it all come down to how well he coordinate that with his dive tanks to be able to jump onto that high ground DPS threatening in the back uh, and roll the fight from there. Obviously, oh my god. Um, I think this might be something like happening between two Widow. You know, like this map for the first part attack, Widow actually pretty good. So, but I don't think Big Dog can bring out those Widow. Maybe Chita pretty good with Widow. Uh, on the other side, let's see how if they can respond to that one. Because if some we have like this duel pretty interesting for Big Dog, Chita can like Widow, this given can like Genji. And if they do in that comp, they can they kind of like just annoy the backline really much with their combo. That's my idea. But let's see how things go. Okay, time coming up and we're getting ready soon in 20 seconds by now.
Here we go, ladies and gentlemen. Let's come to watch for Gibraltar. Once again, it's Nick Kaina coming along with the cast of China in Kairuna and G5. So enjoy and have fun. It's all about be fun. <laughs> this is, after all, just an amateur tournament. It's more about learning and having a good time than it is. Exactly. The, uh... And that's why I've been really pleased with the big dojo. Not only have they been a really successful team, Every single player on the team has actually had huge improvements. I just I can't express how impressed I am with Ram's improvements specifically. Like the way he started, he started just he was literally a bronze slash silver player. He had uh, averaging around 1,500 SR, and he got a new Smurf, placed it this season, and pretty much got the diamond. And that's yeah. absolutely incredible. And I know that I know from you mentioning before of all the players on the team he was the most eager to learn um, definitely definitely see that that enthusiasm and that drive to improve definitely paid off here oh we have a pause someone must have dc'd okay let's have a quick track I'm going to take one down them and ask them if anyone is in. Oh. What happened to your mic, Pyro? It was much better just before. Um, I'm not really sure. Your, your voice suddenly sounds more like crisp. And uh, like, yeah, I've, I've used, I'm using a thick book at the moment to prop it up so it sits close to my mouth. <laughs> no, no, like, it just sounds really sharp. It sounds like you're, it sounds like it's really high pitched and sharp rather than huh. the normal kind. Hi, I'm back, so... I mean, if you go and have a quick look, listen onto the stream, then, you know, you can hear, maybe you'll hear it. Oh, we need to unpause soon, or else there's going to be a tactical stream snipe coming out of either team. <laughs> I know, right? Attackers Don't know if we've had cases of that happening, but I do think it is very possible, as the pause has now revealed both teams' team comps. We have, like, how many minutes do we have? Like, two minutes to go. Like, minute and a half? What should we go? It's just, it's just like 10 seconds or not. Alright. Yeah. Let's see. Does or Clark actually know? Oh, Big Dodge is going for a really interesting setup here. They're doing a super. They're all hiding in the room. And they're waiting to go for a super early dive. Does all clock actually realize that this is their plan? Because if they don't realize, this could be devastating. Or if they do know, this could be devastating for the side of Big Doge. No, they are. They, they, are they don't forward. know. They don't know that. Uh, here and here we have Big Doge going straight in. Going straight in at the moment. Elementix goes down first. Squidgy follows shortly after. It's both the supports are gone. From that attack side of the Oh, but we see Chita get taken down by Liemi and DMT, who has turned around to help the team now. It's really interesting that they're actually running DMT on that stop right now. And Twinks is playing their instrument. Yeah, that is a bit of a change, They have switched their roles up. And with the Sombra pick, is just very interesting because Sombra is actually such a strong character to play, especially with coordination on your team now. And they fully push her position because. Most people don't actually know how to counteract the Sombra just yet. Yeah, the changes to Sombra are definitely been very interesting. Oh, the kills are just coming through. They go to just asserting their normal dominant dive plays. We almost have we have five ults on the side of Big Doge now. Cheetah will get that technical visor really soon as well, because that's one ult that just does that. So Twinks has the Winston ult, and I get Elementix and Squidgy can build their ult pretty fast as well. But I don't think they will get a chance to this fight just yet. Yeah, there's definitely been a lot more somber being played. There we go, Big Doge going with a dive. And they... Ella's given picks up one as the chainsaw has self-destruct. Big Doge have used three ult... Uh, have used four ult of this, actually. Oh, nice. Well, at least they got the value out of it. However, I think they could have potentially saved the Diva Ball, maybe? And the Winston Ult. One of the tank ults could have been saved. And now we have all clock 
about to have all six of their own. Can they finally win the fight? Because they have to shred through NRG's sound barrier. Um, Cheetah might not get value from the tax advisor because of Squizzy's potential business. College is pumped by our members. EMP coming in, hacking well, all the members of Big Dirt. This is just, this is just devastating now. There's nothing Big Dirt can actually do to counteract this. Now is giving the energy to get out of there as the payload, <coughs> payload moves and rolls around there. That was just a bit of a stall from Cheetah. They may have enough people grouped up to get one last retake here, but that was just a good push by. Oh, okay. Will Big Dirt go for the retake? Okay, so, oh, no, 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 uh, that's oh, smart. Yeah. Oh, JP oh, Jay still gets out. caught out there. That's a disaster for Big Doge. And Briggs is going in well deep to try and punish it. Tudor gets hacked, putting him in a very bad position. And sure enough, he gets cleaned up by the rest of the members of Old Block. Big Doge having a back. Yeah, it looks like he's having a pretty off game this round so far. They are chasing really far, but uh, the re regroup group has been depleted by Big Doge. Uh, all six members of the Gojo are back and they're ready to take this next fight again. Uh, there are also both sides and we'll see which action team gets more value first. But there is still that second attack. Back close to being caught by Cheetah. And this is just the defense all and offense all being traded together. Neva Mech goes sky high, soft destruct. Huge Neva Mech goes soft destruct. Help enabled by that EMP as well. Picks up four, three kills plus the Diva Mech. Actually, the EMP was on the opposing side. Oh, you're right. Sorry. That was that, not. Yeah. No, that was just a clean Diva Bomb because the opposing team committed to the fight. They said they were going to use EMP. So the whole team was ready to go in. And as soon as the EMP was thrown, the whole team committed into that fight. But then they didn't realize that. Wait, the Diva Bomb was in the air and it was killing the top of itself. My mind is telling me no! But my body! His blades absolutely are phenomenal, and it is just a joy to see when he pulls that thing out. And that is that is a res coming out of JP. He rest, he did a really risky res for that was given, but thank it was worth it. Sometimes you know you have to make the risky play for the high reward, um, and that is the hero play that turned this fight around and allowed him to hold on to this point for a little longer. The higher the risk, the higher the reward. Otherwise, there would be no risk. And Twitch jumps up to the top of the truck. Both tanks are all trying to get Ram the Rock. He doesn't actually drop any health. And Ram didn't actually drop much health from there. But Chainsaw is being picked. Cheetah pops the attack of Bunch Bunch. There's the Tim Tank. He now is getting covered by the Winston as he comes in. Liam, he takes down Chainsaw. Twinks takes down Cheetah. They have an opening here. Sound Barrier being committed to try and turn this fight around. But the kills are still coming through in favor. Of all part of the moment. Damn to just cleaning up the back end of this fight. Chainsaw being being back there, that'll be the end of that one as they roll this payload through second. Peter firing. Big Doge really need to just do the members that are stay staying on that big dog like she didn't need to get away. Oh buddy can't get away, he's taken down. That's alright. Two minutes left on the clock. This last point once again is not easy to push as well, so. Although there are definitely a chance for both teams. Um, Oko have shown great plays so far. My ultimate is charging. Nonetheless, Big Dosh have been playing really well as well. So this has been a pretty close game. Oko gets Clark, flashed by Cheater and just barely gets out. Oko are closer to Ult than Big Dosh, and I think they just have that. Zell's given his blade again. Pick up for two. That's just two no, kills for that one. However, I think this is this fight is still won by Big Doge. But Big Doge at this point should still try to push for the advantage. They can definitely oh Elementix is really far. Elementix is they can way out of position, man. Oh, but they don't manage to go for All systems check out. Uh, so getting the mech back before the And DMT getting very close to EMP now. There's a couple of these big salts on the side of all the Heavy is very low. He's just pushing the cart. Big Doge aren't responding to this. 
Eins. Eine kommt set. Hier ist eine. Du ist eine. Squishy is gone down with the Transcendence. A disaster there. But at the same time, they got a lot of free card there just from DMT. Definitely. And uh, now looks like they're going to come in with big old advantage in this final fight. Oh, Elementix though gets caught out before the regroup. Squidgy going There's down one well. more fight left in this game. Yeah. However, there are four ults on Orkluck, including a Transcendent switching count of the upcoming blade from the Alice Given. So can they actually force the Transcendence and survive long enough through the EMP visor? Here we come, the EMP is coming in. The EMP is invisible. The bomb is thrown out onto the car. Oh, catches out Jay. That's a big pick early in the fire. EMP fire. picks up three. Black are being committed now. Alright, oh, he dies before he can actually get the blade out. This car get the out. And have a very dominant position right now. But here comes the blade. What can he do with it? Slashing. There's the transcendence out to cover it. And Cheetah is still in the back line, firing off his shots, but that card is just rolling through. Energy gets back on. Ram Primal Raging to buy time for his team to get back. And maybe someone manage it, but no, the focus fire is there. The chainsaw gets DMX. Jay makes it back into the fight with the others given, but unless they can get some kills, it's just stalling for the sake of stalling here. Uh, and sure enough, Orc Luck get that across the line in over time. And the strength with the Somber is that Somber pretty much means that as soon as the EMP comes out for that fight, that should be a one fight for your team. Uh, and in fact, most times you don't even need to use additional ults to stack it with it. So... That's yeah, that's just yeah, what you ha what happens with Sombra now. Sombra is just such a strong character. The problem with Sombra before is that, as the offense hero, she was actually really weak unless you could control your spread really well. So I thought it was okay, but nonetheless, it was still not very efficient to play as a DPS character. And to build old otherwise was your team spamming health packs. But on some maps, you don't actually have that luxury. So with the Sombra now, she puts a huge threat on the backline, especially being able to see low health targets and go for those assassinations. Um, that helps her build hu uh, ult not necessarily much faster, but definitely much faster on certain maps like this kind. Uh, back then it was 2 CP because the team just holds the point and goes for the health back. But on this, it's a different story. So... With that, I mean, Sombra can be played much more often, and Sombra with the MP and a coordinated team can pretty much ensure a one fight. Because it doesn't matter how much ults you have on the opposing team. You can have all six ults, but I can hack all six of you, and you just can't do anything. Uh, even if we don't beat you without more of ults, we might only need that one, because we can ensure that we get value and can't be counted. That's why Sombra is just such a hard character to play against here, and we'll have to see if Big Dodge can actually adapt against that. Incoming. It looks like Liamy and Twigs are actually swapped again with uh, Liamy, who we've pretty much seen on Diva all tournament going over to Chris. DMT, oh, gets an early kill onto NRG Zen, but uh, the advantage is not being pressed by all Pluck at the time. You can actually see from DMT's time that he's a. Oh, Cheetah picks up Squidgy. That's a good dive coming out of Big Dive, actually. Yeah, NRG yeah. is dangerously low though after the DMT win for that kill, but if we have a look at DMT's time, he's, his most played is Mercy, but second to that is Sombra and Soldier, so maybe they realize that it would have been better, because Twinks, the old clock has, do seem to be doing better after they've made the switch, yeah. uh, whether or not it's because both players are better on their respective roles or, or not, we have the fight beginning, DMT is dangerously low, Somewhere. Twinks is getting dangerously low this time. Big oh, Dodge is now getting dangerously low as well. Cheater is just uncontested. He's coming from the dragon blade. Picks up two already. He's going for some more. But that. Didn't get the kills, but the damage came in and it's all been damage came through. Cheater is cleaning up the tail end of that fight. 
Now we have the, the guy named just something the, the back. His cheater is oh, That's a contest. beautiful headshot I'll take for sec. And Squidgy is still laying mine because of the late spawn. DMT is there with him. No one can hide. Oh, but he makes, oh he, he's seen now. No, and he just, just barely well, gets around the corner. He gets around the corner with uh, Chino landed a body shot there. He kept his head. He kept his head down, I should say. Alright, so Big Dog is pushing this car. <laughs> JP pops the Valkyrie. DMT is up top, tries to get the hack, but he managed. Ram jumps in dangerously deep. Oh, but he has that. Oh, and he does manage to pop the yellow. EMP comes in, but only managed to pick up two members, so I'm sick there. Al is given in a difficult spot and gets picked out there at the end. This may be a chance for all fucking to stabilize here. Sneaky res for the NRG, but uh, he doesn't need to make it out. Chase is in, Jay going down. Will they get the DMAC on the cheetah? Twinks is out of mech. Not really what they wanted from that. And the rest of Big Go's been able to safely move through. Oh, oh, but the DMT picks up Ramarok in the spawn! Oh! <coughs> he tried to give his heal his ult charge, but they forgot that DMT can actually come in real deep as the Sombra and see you because you're low health. <coughs> and now we have four ults. Close to uh, the Diva Bomb as well from the side of Ockluck, whereas Big Doge only have three. Um, there is a desperately trying to get their neck back before Trans can counter the play. Diva Bomb goes in, but that's not a good angle. Uh, but here comes the blade combined with the trans, but dueling trance there, just uh, keeping everyone healthy. But uh, the kills at the tail end of that are coming over in favor of Big Doge. With Big Doge out dropping now as well, and uh, how far away is it? Old Clark is still up with the HP part. Oh, yeah, Old Clark cleaning up the tail end of that quite well, and uh, those supports struggling to get out. However, now there's only one visor and soon an EMP from Old Clark, and Big Doge don't really have anything to counter against that. Need healing. Form up. Yeah, they've got a very strong defensive position here. This uh, final point. You've the attackers do have a lot more further travel to uh, get back from the spawn. This is just a really hard point to push, in general. Yeah. Yeah, oh, Chisel has a nice hook on the DMP, but they don't manage to actually pick up the kill. That was good, oh, that's switched off to that power. The MT is still getting pressured out by Chief's presence. And there's the EMP being committed. NRG goes down instantly due to the shield loss on that. Attack by the shield comes in on the well, energy but... gets the res. Maybe that was just a delayed stagger for himself. Yeah, it doesn't look that be... way. Cheetah's still alive and harassing, but uh, yeah, Cheetah's My ultimate is charging. I think Cheetah should maybe switch to McCree just so he can stop DMP from being so aggressive by being able to land that flashbang headshot. Or flashbang right click keep it. Building towards the goes for the hours given, does the night get the kill. That's a mold. That's a huge pick. And Liam is being brought to the same Squiddy pops the transcendence after realizing the only team was critical, but was too late. And this, I think Big Doge might be able to take this fight now. Yeah, it does look like they have a huge advantage. It's just Twins. That was like a huge pick off to the Moira coming out from Big Doge. That was what they needed. And the is given already after one fight has that rocket barrage. And we see. Four, five ults on the side of the touch, but all clock do come in for the recon. Yes, Chainsaw pops the hog, gets taken down. Barrage comes in, builds one. Doesn't match to get the rest. Gets knocked out of the sky. JP pops the Valkyrie. Cheetah picks up Squidgy, and maybe what they need to get this across. And uh, NRG popping trans as well to keep everyone safe during the supercharger. But uh, there's still the reinforcements are coming in into that close spawn location. It looks like Big Doge are running out of steam on this point. Oh, but that's a, a late pulse bomb from Cheetah on the Kuzi. I think the Alice Given should have been slightly closer to the ground for that barrage. He would have managed to pick up all of them. 
And that was just really unfortunate because that was a really good barraging opportunity he had there. We're heading into the final fight. Fensor is just pulling his way onto the cart to make sure that those... JP is taken down. Getting pressured out by the tanks. But, uh, up for now. Off the truck will buy space. And it looks like Orclark yeah, may have this one in the bag. And yes, there it is. Orclark managed to rebound back and take a win here on Gibraltar. Ladies and gentlemen, what's a game? What's a game? of the game. No small part, thanks to DMV's exceptional performance on Sunday. This is that, this is that res blade that we saw before. And we'll be going on to another five minute break to once again give the uh, teams a chance to confer with their coaches uh, and discuss their strategy for this map. Yep. And we'll be heading over to Volskaya Street next. Oh, so DMT is a Sombra main. Um, that's probably why it's coming out really well for them. And we head yeah. over to Volskaya Industries, where actually Sombra is another really good character on this character. Design. So I'm going to also use this break and go have a quick talk to my team. Uh, see what's going on there. So, G5, want to come down and talk to them? <laughs> and I'll be back in a few. Well, I think go on like what I expect. What do you think, Pirate? This map of Skyra? Yeah, well, it's a good map for Sombra. It's a very good map for Sombra. Yes, and also I think it's good. It's good also for Zara. That's the best combo. If you grab turn and you got the EMP at the same time, you are absolutely winning the fight in Mod K. Yeah, I'm personally not a big fan of Zaya on this map. It's still it's still very open, it can be hard to get out of it. Um, but uh, oh yeah, I'm more in favour of either running dive tanks or a hog risk comp, um, personally. But it's, it's going to be interesting to see how Big Doge adapt their strategy to try and deep the Sombra here. It's still like a good map for Genji. Like, but in my opinion, at the moment, you all know the perk from Sombra. You like make all the counter like Genji and Hanzo not able to do world climb. Absolute like counter all the ability, even if it's passive. So, the Sombra changing, I think everyone gonna play her so much, and especially for someone who really loves Sombra and always got people blame them for being like a drone in a comp game, you know. This is even a good chance for them, and I feel like Blizzard, Blizzard using the thing called, uh, what that called? I forgot the name, mm. oh yeah, this is the way they want to do, they want to make the people play the new character, and make that door character become kind of like a part of the game, so this pop like this for like a month, a second month, then it will come back to normal, so this is the plan for Blizzard, pretty well done by Jeff Kaplan. <laughs> Um, yeah, I've definitely seen a lot more Sombra in my um, in my competitive games and done placements and all of that. Um, not always to good effect. I've certainly been in some games where we've got a Sombra who hasn't really achieved anything on our team. Yet, as is typical for matchmaking, believes that they're pairing, but uh, 
Unfortunately, that's not an important game. Definitely some games where Sombra had devastating loss though. The, the minigun of Sombra is like actually able to kill a tank with one clip. 60 bullet. If you aim for the head and the, the fourth head, you will actually kill an attack. Like Reinhardt, uh, Monkey, one clip. So, in my opinion, C can apply a counter for counter die. Like, C can shoot the tank really good, like Diva and stuff. C absolutely can destroy anyone who comes in the whole way. So, this Sombra, like a real DBF for anyone who wants to learn. You should learn by now, that's my advice. I suppose it's working out what we can expect to see here. I dare say we're going to be seeing Cheetah go agree to try and somber a bit more. Probably... I don't know, do you run, do you run the Genji or do you run the Fari here? What do you reckon? You know like for the Sombra, if both teams play Sombra, the character go well with them is like a soldier or Genji. Because no hero, like so with the soldier, we already have the form of combo, like everyone got hack, right? No shield. So then soldier can just attack enemy team with that bush. Pretty easy. With like, kind of like pretty easy combo. With Genji, you kind of, uh, you need the Sombra able to hack the other Sombra. So C won't attack it. So you will have free rank to attack. So I think the best way for this map now, if enemy team buys Sombra, you have to buy Sombra to counter that. Okay. It's gonna be a bit hard to run an attack somber into a defense one. They'll have all the pain control. Well, but anyway, I'm good to see like new hero with my sombra. So they might got room to play. We already see like her three season after that, like the first season she come out, right? And then the next two season, no one play her because she's not playable. And now CE. And we're happy to see her. Oh, we still saw a fair bit on Volskaya and the Central 66 where she had the pack control and just get huge value all up and fine. She's now a bit more versatile and been able to travel in Volskaya Industries. And I'm back! And welcome back. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back after the break. It's me, Kema, the host, coming up with Pyro and Caster G fan as well. Let's come to watch fun. I mean, no, 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 no. Volskaya Industry, my dad. And let's see Vol Sombra. Alright, so this is another Sombra map. So I'm sure, see, as we can see, DMT has already picked the Sombra again. Um, personally, though, I believe the way you can counter a Sombra is by engaging her team before she actually comes in for the harass or engaging her team immediately after she translocates away because that's when the Sombra's at her weakest. She can't like, she can't put down her translocator to be far away again, and if you guys walk in at that point, she can't actually sneak past you with the invisibility. So, to engage immediately after she translocates, or to just engage before she gets to come in to harass is one way to beat Sombra. Otherwise, you could do things maybe like a tank stack with Moira, because you just have such huge health bars, and Sombra's damage output is low. So, by running the Sombra, they do sacrifice a proportion of damage which could come from other characters. So, uh, if you had a huge amount of tanks just there, even if you get EMP'd, they don't have enough damage to necessarily finish you off, especially since Moira can still put out huge healing just with her juice. So that's one thing they do need to watch for. It looks like they are running the tank stack. And, uh, I believe Jay will just be firing out a scanning arrow before swapping over to Moira. Attackers incoming. Defend objective A. There it is. Hey there. DMT is working their way around and seeing the tank stack. Uh, I'm not. Big Doge has away. Big Doge just to go into the point. Liam is already dangerously low, he's taken oh. down. And Liam is going down there. Element is getting pressured out by Chainsaw's deep there. Kills in his roll again. Well, Big Doge. Two seconds. Trying to buy time on the point. Not going to last much longer. Gets to the next out. And DMT. Just sort of stalling over the health pack there. It's quick in five, my big My ultimate is charging. 
Given and Cheetah coming up to uh, pressure the second, lost. even as the rest of the team is their way forward. Yeah, we have. And that was going as close to that ground song. There's no defense all yet on the side of all plus to counter that. The coalition that comes in, that's what they need. Ram has a huge spin onto the enemy. Huge spin, and uh, the team has been in, committed, but. Winston's I don't think it's enough because Big Doge just has such huge health bars that they can't kill. The JP's yielded, it's yielding them all back up. And this is looking really bad for Eclipse, but Big Doge still have all on their own. And this is the ground being committed. Uh, Lamy does use... He's even on as well. Oh, still gets on the points of risk. Wiggy comes for the point, but what can he do alone as a Zinyata? It's just long enough, but Big Doge is still counting the split. I think it was Eclipse's touch, and Big Doge is still counting the split. And they've done it. It's a blistering time. Six minutes, 21 seconds, still on the time bank. That is a dominant performance of Big Doge. That's really got to take the wind out of the sails of Warplug like there. However, can they actually do that again on this defense? This is interesting. This is really good. I like this, actually. They're running a soldier here. So they know that... Oh, but Big... Uh, but all clock seem like they're running their own tank stack. Okay, yeah. No, I well, still they, think this is seen. perfectly balanced. This is perfectly yeah. balanced because the hog on this map versus the soldier on this map, just it's it's two, two whole new worlds. The soldier's damage is so much more. However, the thing for Big Doge to watch out is just don't get hooked. The Big Doge can manage to like barely get hooked, or get hooked and his team help them. So if they survive through the hook, then there's no way Big Doge should really lose this, because there's just too much damage coming out of Cheetah. They don't have really much people to contest him, except the Diva that could fly up to him, but personally as a soldier main, um, if I'm uncontested most of the time and I know the only person that can actually touch me is Diva, then I'm pretty sure I'll have my health pack most of the time and whatnot. So it's really hard for the Diva to actually just kill a soldier without being in his face at the start already, or being at a short distance of flight. If Big Doge managed to hold like around one of the chokes and Cheetah can sit far back on with that soldier, it's not actually easy for Spusak, who's playing the Diva right now, to just fly at him and actually kill him. So they really have to watch out for the soldier. He's he's just it's really hard to contest him in this case, unless Hawklock managed to play this really well. We'll One. see how this goes. Attackers incoming. Defend objective A. All clock working the way around. Uh, Alice giving him a spot. Alice giving him a spot. Oh my god. A lot of trouble there in the middle of the game. Dude, pick up the DMP. He's behind them. He's getting away with it. They're ignoring him. Alice giving him a spot in life. He's one They're eight. They're splitting themselves up. And Alice giving him a spot in life. Oh, this is the four on five on the point. down there on the point. And the tank's on. Oh, clutch just didn't have the healer right there. No, they split themselves up and that's put them into a precarious position, but this kite is still. A Scooty's got that coalescence already. Coalescence does force Cheetah to back off a little bit, and it does look the kills are coming through in favor of Orpah. This one gets the mech back. You know, she almost has that beat off though. Cheetah goes in for the that is perfect. Big Doge do have four ults for this next point though. Hello there. Uh, yeah. with, with the feed drop for the, tra for the um, Graviton Surge coming in. And this is definitely audible. So I think Cheetah just has to watch out. Don't keep holding the Graviton and make sure you actually kill one person with the crow attack device there and Big Doge can definitely hold this. Because unfortunately that Alice given actually got hooked. And that's what you get for being so aggressive. Yeah, even then, he, he got away with it a lot longer than he really should have been. Definitely. And uh, as a result of that, they split themselves up and it really slowed down their thing. That's there. why Big Doge actually managed to get so much ult from that. Yeah. Because they were actually winning the fight. Huge shadow comes out of DMC. Beat comes in! What a beat! What a beat drop! Actually, it's about to run out of DMC. Cheetah pops the second ball. But is having, he's getting zoned out by the self-destruct there. Comes back in late, does pick up Squidgy off the end of that, and uh, there's a yeah, there's a cleanup grab there, which will just see Big Doge 
get me in. That was four ults from the side of Big Doge being used. Yeah, they, oh, actually, they, no, that was five. They only have an Earth Shatter to go with right now. However, all Cluck did use the Diva Bomb, they used the uh, Earth Shatter, they used Hoggle, and they used Beat Drop. So they used four as well. It was tough from both sides. So now we have a Cold Distance and Graviton versus their Shatter. Um, if Ram can pull off a three man Shatter, Big Doge can definitely win this. And it'll be interesting because if they use the Graviton first, right, the other team is going to come in aggressively. So Ram could actually pretend to counter the Graviton with the Shatter. Yeah. Oh, oh, no, 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 no. And there it is, he's got But the Graviton is No one's really in position to follow up on that, though, because of the Shatter. Those coming in. Chainsaw got a bit back oh. as Diva Bomb again. And this is just a really cluster fight. Two seconds he make by the Alice Gibbon, and the Alice Gibbon is so charged. He's just melting through this. Oh, Buck now backing out. They realize the fight's lost. Will they get out without getting further stuck? Looks like. Oh, Cheetah oh, almost gets hooked there, but uh, it's out of the way of time. Oh, setting up for the next attack. My ult is charging! DMT urging his way forward into this fight. And we have four ults on the side of Big Dogs. They can def they should be able to take this fight. Oh, Big Dogs are around the rock, but he goes down for it. The Alice Gibbon actually used the grapple, but it got eaten by a Kusak. They committed the sand barrier there, I think in response to Oh, Clark just waited for all this and stuff. Hooked in. Diva Bomb comes in. Diva Bomb! 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 Diva Reinforcements starting to come in for Big Doge though, and that should be it. Oh no, they've still got four up, and that's a big shatter by DMT. Takes out the Lucio, gets some damage on the Alice Given. And uh, Alice Given and Ram the Rock going down there. They're going to get at least a tick here as they fortify this point. Cheetah now swapped over onto the Reaper for the extra damage. JP's about to get that coalition. He gets going, but they'll get to use it. Energy comes in with the beat drop. And he gets himself. He's from the shatter. They need, they need Big Doge needs a filter all into it. Get Elementix! Get Elementix! And they get the kill off. That may be enough, but Elementix does survive through it. And uh, the kills are still going through in favour of Opera. We've got dominant presence here on the point. Earth Shatter just to knock that coalescence out. Cheetah making on to the point, he's going to die in a moment. And Wraith Thorn disappears. Big Doge are still scoring this out pretty well. Yep, every moment here is buying time off. Oh, there and it is. All Clark fired and he managed to get it. Yeah, it was very unlikely that they were going to be able to win that fight, but every second they can bleed off the time bank sets themselves up for a stronger position. And they have over double the time as we see Orclock in another attack run. Alright, so Big Doge are on the defense again. They've, it looks like they've decided to just run quad tank. It's an interesting choice on defense. Because I genuinely don't really think adjust. they had anything wrong with the soldier. It was really just the hell was given getting that early hook in, and his team just couldn't do much from there on. But as the plan here is, I mean, I guess they know that they're better at brawling, so if the attackers come in with quad tank... They can just brawl it out, but then the attackers have a chance to adjust. Oh, but the attackers have just actually decided to switch their team from... Oh, looks like they're not, actually. We just got baited. <laughs> Will they keep this Junkrat? That's an interesting thing. Yeah, certainly, this... certainly the Junkrat is going to throw a wrench into that quad tank. Wait, the and this Alice... is just another switch coming out of Victor. They've got Zarya... They got the Alice Gun playing Reaper. So they're expecting the tank stack as yeah, well. Yeah, they're definitely expecting a tank stack so... coming in. So now we'll be seeing the Reaper versus the Chakra. Which DPS will provide superior gameplay to his team? Uh, although there's Diva and Hog trading as well. All Big Dutch have to do is generally just still get hooked, and they should be actually fine here. Brian's DMT is really DMT's in a lot of trouble there. Oh, that's a 
let's look at the health bars. Ravnarok is dangerously low, but he does have a shield up, and there's no one that can immediately reach to him to actually take him down, so he should be able to survive through this one. And then from there on, it will just be a 5 versus 6, and Big Doge should be able to win this fight. Um, with the positioning now as well, the L's given is pretty much in the faces of both tanks alive on the side of Orc Clark, and that is about to be devastating as soon as they are paused. Uh, yeah, he's just gotta come into that flank and it's not melting tanks where yeah. I can't behind range shields, they're in a great position. Can't tell if Squidgy is actually just did Squidgy fade inside or not, because if Squidgy faded inside the little make a uh, mini health pack room right now where she is, uh, that is once again a dangerous position for him to be in as well. So in general Big Doge has to look good to win this one. No kills actually rolling in just here. The Owl's given the fact that he's famously though, he has been forced to use this thing. The enemy is finally taken out, and Mantex is still just standing on the point. Chainsaw almost gets the next, but... Might be super out. Energy caught in the trap, but there's the kills connected. Chainsaw but... does actually get d mech but what, is he going to find a reset? He does go for the reset. Um, with the diva, he should actually be able to get back just in time for the fight. Um, if O'Clock can push this advantage right now, there's a potential for to win. However, Big Doge do have much more ultimates, so they could still win a 5v6 at this point. Uh, taxi... Oh, Taxi is... Lucio's committed to taxiing as well. So right now, this is a 4 on 6, but I don't think O'Clock have realized this yet. Too late. Now, JP uses a coalescence. Early coalescence. Maybe it was a misclick. And I don't know what Ramrock still he just charges all of them. Ramrock's well deep, and they have to punish him. He lands like... Oh, that's a big shatter. He may have just gone away with it. No follow-up. Oh, there's just ults everywhere here. What is going on in this fight? But it does look like Gap Dojo pulled that one out. Big Dojo can stagger this. Will they plan a stagger this time? Oh, they could have actually got more time off the clock from that one, but good enough. Oh, we have an auto DC pause, I am pretty... Sure. I'm walking on that. That was just old thrown into a little room. There was nothing O'Clock could have done there. However, Big Doge. Uh, however, O'Clock do have two ultimates coming into this one, and they're about they're close to their Shadow and the Oh Hog. Um, Big Doge only have a B drop, and the Coalescence will build up rather fast as well. So, some portals essentially versus the So We'll see which. Team actually gets some more value in this fight. Chainsaw is so fit, but he has a good bubble. And he gets this anti flies right out and gets Cheetah so much energy. Fire in the hole. Here comes the top. Aya comes in. That was given his full fit. Nice pin. Aya comes in. Comes in. Oh, huge shatter. That's that's going to be that's going to be the point. Definitely. I was given still alive though, trying to trying to turn it back. Big goes around the rock. Uh, energy coming in just to buy some more time. Pencil coming back on as well, because any second they can buy out here, they're only gonna have 30 seconds added to the time bank, which makes it very tough. But uh time but going if Doge can them. actually hold this, they're close to the Shadow that have the coalescence, they have the Diva Bomb, or oh, they're close to the Diva Bomb and they are close to the repo. Both of which will be rather fast to build up in this last fight, especially against the tanks that come versus shotguns. So I don't, I don't know if Big Four uh, can actually manage it. Pin comes in, it's gonna be rough, but it's bubble. Good opening pin. Oh, this is just keeping him alive. Chainsaw gets beamed with 1% left to his ultimate. He doesn't look back wrong. Oh, Ella's given pulling out a huge Beyblade here. Beyblade coming in from the side. Oh, Chainsaw gets beamed with 1% left to his ultimate. He doesn't look back wrong. Oh, Ella's given pulling out a huge Beyblade there. He does get shattered down. Sound barrier being committed. All clock still in a good position here. There's the all comes out of the angle. Picks up one kill. Picks up the all kill. I think Big Dirk might have a chance to get back at this one. The reinforcements are coming in. And all clock just don't have any more members left. It's zooming all the way. Big Dirk down Yes, the Big Dirk have held it here. The Big Dirk have managed to hold this point with. Oh boy, it comes in touch, but it's not enough. And this is just desperation touches, really. That that death blossom came in at just the right time at just the right place, and even though he got shattered out of it very quickly, damage was done. Two kills and so much damage inflicted. He got the two valuable targets all. He got the Junkrat and the Moira. They lost the healing and the damage output.
And that's why the members that were actually left on the point of four Big Doge didn't die fast enough. And now we have Big Doge has six minutes and 21 seconds to take the first point and get one tick. Uh, with how they played that first round, this is definitely very possible. Very, um, if, let's see if they can actually replicate that. Yeah, it's definitely going to be very difficult to hold on here um, without, I suppose, without a dramatic change that just absolutely bottles up this presumably tank stack that's going to come at them again. But, I mean, how do you deal with that sort of stack? Resuming here now. We'll see what all club come up with to try and pull the progress of this. Hi guys, it's by um not like our park. We are keep having problems with the spot internet, so that's why sometimes it causing onto this situation. So it looks like they're pulling out the Torbjorn, which are they really, really committing to it? Oh, and they are. Yeah, yeah, he, is, yeah he is well and truly out of spawn, so this is not... I'm not... Torbjorn does not have the damage to deal with a tank stack. And I mean, it looks like there's not a tank stack coming out. Right, Definitely. Torbjorn's turret just doesn't get enough value against tank stack. Sure, his gun is still a pump shotgun that does lots of work, but... Can we... Oh, no! Oh, oh the is going for well. the Shots. actual full hold on the corner. They just want to keep Big Doge right off the point with this comp. Can they actually succeed? Because if Big Doge runs into the fake, that Bastion's not going to live, and he's just not going to get any value from this. Big Doge just have to take this slow. They see that Orcock is doing something quite cheesy. Yeah, they've definitely seen the Bastion at this point. Interesting shield. EMT drops down, he's taken down immediately! Bastion's still sitting up top. Yeah, Bastion is just down. Jay, Jay going down early in that fight means the tanks are just not going to be able to sustain. Especially if it's just Bastion fight. Jira is, is treasuring Twinks here. And that could give them the opening if you can get away with it. No, there goes, there goes Chief now off the map. Big Dutch have immediately changed their comp to commit to a dive. But first things first, they need to answer that tower. They need to take that tower down and then go for the dive before Kusa can actually get that rebuilt. Oh, well, there goes the turret. But he's just oh, gonna build it up again. And I think Sheeta might actually be better off playing Soldier into this thing. I think those moves through the top. They get in, Twink is taken down. down. That's the first one got the fight. That was really going down to the turret. Oh, 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 that said, Chainstall will have the Diva Bomb, and there's one potential to, to that turret. That was given again, you're gonna whittle that down with the long range shuriken. All clocks are actually holding on the same side now together. Chainstall sees this. This is gonna be devastating. This Diva Bomb can actually make, can be everything they need. And she does well, if he goes in straight for that. Yeah, there it is. Here's a hook oh, oh, that's a great hook. That was amazing. But she just holds one fast. But Chain Nightrock actually uh, goes in. He throws the enemy off the map. And Big Doge are looking really strong for the fight. Yeah, Sam Barrow being committed. Big Doge, they want this fight and they've got the tools they need to do it. Squidgy hooks in NRG, doesn't get the kill. The last one left on the coin, taking a breather, trying to buy time desperately. But the big doge have taken this point. And look at that, Cheetah and Chainsaw just used their ultimates in that fight. But they have 80% of both of them again. Check me 
Oh, I don't think all fuck is gonna realize that this is happening, so they're keeping the same comp, but Sheena can just go around, land the pulse bomb on the twins again, and Big Dash have the opening they need. That was good, has that play, but there's no defense of all on the side of one clock, he can definitely pull for an hour and kill everyone. This, this could be the fight. As we can see, Sheena is looking for that pulse bomb. Oh, oh, Big Dash all going around the side for the attack. It's the blade, it's already got Krusik, but Gina gets taken out. Oh, really nice counterplay there by Orkluck as they whole hog to pick up the others. Uh, Diva Bomb over the top, but this fight... Huge Diva Bomb! Oh, that's actually done it! That's opened this up again! A big Doja pushing! The favor, Damn, DMT struggling to stay alive. But has yeah, now the managed to get to it, okay, and they had a managed to pull it out. The reason they lost that fight was because they didn't scout out well enough. They should have waited more. They didn't know where the Bastion was. And with that play, you should always be looking to stick the Bastion as a tracer and then have your team going. But this time they didn't know where the Bastion was and they all committed in, into yeah, a little trouble. They committed in and the they took a fight in the room where the Bastion had line of sight straight into them. And the biggest problem was they, you had to use the mobility to get over the, to that side of the map. And as a result, they had nothing else to actually propel them. Oh, Cheetah caught in the trap! And there it is. Down. I don't think JP's actually managing to get this one res, and then... Oh! JP gets hooked in. Gets hooked and does get, get away. away! Just barely. Big Doge are going back for the reset. Still two minutes and a half on that clock. Uh, Twins have has switched My off the Bastion and the Torbjorn. They now have a Junkrat with the... Uh, Reaper and uh, Reinhardt over the Orissa. I would have stayed with the Orissa to try and catch that dive. Oh, that's a good, really good dive! That was a great the... dive, and that's really well cool. with that. Ramrock pops the hole. Pops the front face. Pops the two beautiful off the map. Dragon's put two off the map. Dragon two! Magnificent! And Ramrock is leading it. What is that Diva Bomb? Oh, uh, the Diva Bomb is just. <laughs> Making sure no one's getting on that point. Yeah, I forgot that they only needed one. Thing. They only needed one third. If they needed the whole point, I would have been like, "What are you doing, Chainsaw? Why are you throwing this game?" And here we have an interesting Torbjorn player of the game. Why well, would you look at that? Standing next to his bay. Gets a nice hit. Double hit. Double. Ah. Oh. Yeah, it's a good point. How did how did Ram look not at JP's stats? There? Look at JP's stats there, and that, that just is... shows how much work he was doing on that Moira. Getting that coalescence every single time. Yeah, what a game! Oh wow! What game. Ram and Rock went huge there. That was a, it was it's such a shame that we couldn't actually see that in the first person. You managed to push off two people off the map at the same time. <coughs> he got the Reinhardt and the Junkrat, and that was huge value from him. Okay, map number four. I expect that, okay, it's gonna be Hollywood. So for both teams, this is the time to discard. This is a match bomb. This is a very important map. Like, Big Doe can win 3 1, or our club can make a revert 2 2. This is the change. So this is the time for the coach from both sides, group up, talk with them, get the best advice they can, and we will be back in like five or seven minutes. Entering a short break here, and I'm going to go back to my team. To play some music. Whew. Wow, I need to drink.
We are back for the next round. Yes, we are. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. It's me, Kaima, coming along here once again, the streamer for tonight. Thank you so much, Launchbox, for your streaming experience. Very well done to keeping our server on online. Also, it's me, Kaima, the host, coming with G Fan Casting, one of the best. Also, with Pyro from us as well. I hope you guys all pump up for this map for. It's about Hollywood. So, what do you guys think about Hollywood and which strike gonna be? Hollywood is an interesting map. It's a map where you can run dive and you can run tank stack. Um, Big Doge have looked strong on both. It'll be interesting to see which one they actually pick. Because even if you tank stack the first point through, the second point, uh, it'll be interesting because it has so much high ground that the other team could actually potentially run dive and make it work. But once again, that just comes up to which team can actually play this out better. Hello, Pyro, are you here? Yes, sir, I'm here, I'm with you. It does look like uh, Big Doge is setting up for that tank stacking. I like that idea. Although Ram is on the torp, so... He's <laughs> being a torp runner. Oh. And I think we have an auto DC force here. Auto DC That's a good check. Uh, shout out to welcome here. <laughs> the wonderful internet we were promised that you've done. Uh... Brought in Team Mobile, the Unlimited American Network. Are you mean Telstra from Australia Network? Only give you 50 things, no matter what where you are. Looks like. Um... Yeah, so it looks like Oldclock are going for a fairly classic counter dive comp here with the uh, soldier and junk rat behind Rissa. Yep. Little do they know that the big coach is bringing out all oh, and she does. I mean, Liss is just dropping them shots, making them think that we're gonna run a dive. I think if Big Doge just once again do the normal thing, you know, speed onto the point and kill DMT, this should be a relatively easy first point take. Whether or not they can double that lead, if assuming we they get an easy first point take, it is going to be up to them. And we have all clickers all holding on the high ground right now. All big dogs have to do really is go through a side room and just walk on the point and force them down. Attackers incoming. Defend objective A. Okay. Uh, looks like. Oh no! Big Doge are running a normal. Uh, not a normal, cool. but. And Jay goes down very early. Two two two. Wait, no, this is a 3 2 2. This is a 3 1 2. Pretty sure 1. Easy as a. They don't see the traps that they're around against the trap. It uh, looks like they're going to run. Hit the tanks and gets punished for it. However, Liam is on the point of learning as a Zenyatta. That's really bad. He's gonna get taken down. <coughs> Ram that nice spin on the Twinks. Q-Stack drops down, but DMT is still up there for some reason. And they don't have their main tank on the point helping them. Victor is still going on, and why is DMT still not dropping on the point? No, no, DMT might keep get himself staggered if he doesn't come to the point of them. He's dropping down now, but it's too little too late. What are you even saying? DMT, what are you doing, man? Who are you doing, man? Who are you protecting as the main tank, DMT? Who are you protecting as the main tank, DMT? All Cluck have responded by switching to the dive comp with Rodog. Looks like Squishy didn't actually get time to switch. Certainly that Pharah from Twinks is going to be very difficult. However, there is no mercy on the side of all clocks. So if Chainsaw or Chainsaw gets hooked in, but so if Chainsaw on the Diva actually flies up towards the Twinks, there is a potential we can just take Twinks straight out. Kusak is uncontested and just raining damage on them. Ram lands a huge shadow once again. He drops the, he saves his life, but the core is. Kusak is trying to get out of there. No one, no one's pushing the car right now. Half starts moving in now. And for the next bit, Big Doge should actually want to get half the advantage. Yeah, what 
Kusak is staggered and there's no more high ground for him to actually hold. This is a little small choke point that they have to come through first off into an enclosed, into a like small space, closed quarter fight against the tank stack. So Big Dodge look really strong here, especially she has that ground for first off. Although there is a Kusak is alone behind all of them. Cool. He bought the tank visor, but uh, the B gets dropped to counter it out. He goes down very now. Ram goes for a pin, but the enemy looks like he's been hit. Big barrage support there from the Ah, and there's the, the pause for it as well. Good check. Got Lonely Emmy is back in now, so. So we roll through on the third point, and Big Doge shows no signs of slowing down. Now uh, that's a most of all clock the, uh, the old spawn as well. But it's in a very dangerous spot. It's also got some real deep bombs in, but that's still a good. That was never possible. So, so that was my second F. Oh, but quickly, uh, the enemy pops the transcendence now. They pop the trans, they pop the primal rage. Um, like they're actually committing it to them. Yeah, they're fine. Ram does have one. that. Yeah. The enemy's behind them alone. Why aren't they turning onto him? The enemy's taking it down. Ram Rock is coming back in. He has the Earth Shadow. This bubble was already used. If he gets close, he can actually use this. Yeah, Orc like having to back off here. They've just blown a lot of ults. Don't have a lot to say, but Ella's given taking the high ground now. Yeah. Getting his hook, the bubble's up. I've got you. Yeah. 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 That's a huge shatter coming out of Ramnor off. Oh, man. Yeah. Yeah. There's still a ground upon Zerch on the side of Big Doge as well, and there's no transcendence to stop that. There's just not, there's just no people on or clutch in, in general. They don't even need to use a grab phone at this point. Nice oh, pin coming out of Ram Rock, keeping him in his one. Ram gets two kills, and all around actually in. <laughs> yeah, they're not going to get anyone out to get onto that card. Score. to three. Switching sides. That's a solid 3 minutes 39 seconds for Big Doge. It's a very good time on this map as well. We'll see how All Clock react to this. All Clock has decided to go in the summer again. I like that idea. But Big Doge realized that if you're going to play summer, we'll just keep our tank stack up. And you, you can't really do much to us. So ultimately, I think if All Clock have struggled, if All Clock struggle to take this, they might just switch to a tank stack to counteract it. I was wondering why I was sitting in the sample still. Need to. <coughs> there we well, go. I do. I do remember last time we saw the Emmy. His ping, his internet was just. Oh my god. You know, I always thought that like Australia was supposed to be superior to New Zealand. You guys have everything no. cheaper and stuff as well. No, but when I see your internet. internet no, I'm just okay. like, yo, what is that? Yeah, so New Zealand got fiber to the premises, and uh, we did not. What? What is this pausing? Oh, let me check down. It's out of bounds. Another tank heavy comp from Big Doge here. 
Lukash have been really strong on the tank comps in almost every single map they ran it on. But never forget that they, their dives have just been good as well. So it just shows how strong of a team they are in general. Although all Cluck on the map that on the Gibraltar game, all Cluck did also play really well. Big Doge had no answer for the MT on that Sombra. Maybe they can answer it this game. MT already in deep, hacking the pack, and we have another auto pause coming in. That's probably a good choice here to try to shut down the tank stack. If you can get a big engine, you're going to have a lot of power. Definitely. And uh, without Flint the goes for a huge shot, but he's in the deep and alone. You can't get any help. Yeah, Orcock's going to need to back up and reset here. Big Doge have managed to hold this. Do we have any ults coming up on either side? Not really. Not quite yet. We've got a couple Not of quite yet. Late kill on the I think we'll, we'll be, we might be able to see some ults come out this next fight. Five naked charges soon enough in the fight. The MT is poking you to try and build up that ultimate charge. Uh, Mentex is 70 onto that Valkyrie, however, Big Doge do have a couple of ults at the 60-70 mark themselves. <coughs> the longer this poke phase goes on, the more difficult it is for all clock to make a move. Ram going in for a charge there, but uh, much. Nade is dropped and it does land get Ram, but I don't think that's enough. DMT comes in alone once again. Element takes either Dark, uses the Valk. Oh, that's a good that's stick on the chainsaw. But, uh, chainsaw the Element is right in! Oh, oh, that's huge! What is that flight? In that fight right there. And Element Angel Flight and uh, Guardian Angels into the Diva Bomb. <laughs> That one, that one's going to leave a mark. And now Big Doge have four of their ults still used here, but DMT does have that EMP. If he can... There it is, there it is! Maybe a bit early, but uh, all clock coming through. Cheetah goes down early, and they've got Jade as well. That's also going to have the light oh, being shattered by Ram, and the sand barrier being dropped to keep them up. This may just turn it around here. Ram getting low. Oh, that was given to have that death blossom. He's looking to use it. He gets hacked, and he he's kind of hacked. He's not getting that one out. And uh, Chainsaw going down on the point there. NRG desperately oh, trying. Right, Jay is back in the fight. But, uh... Cheetah is also back with the Grapple Search. It's definitely going to be to use it. Quick kills. NRG very low there. That is used the Grapple but, Search. Uh, and Ram being... Yeah, that's... that's I think Big Doge have just pulled this one back from a range being committed there by Twinks to try and turn this around. Chainsaw gets the mech. Ellis Gibbons back on that Reaper. They need to get him under control. And uh, all of them. I think Big Doge might have just lost his troll. What a play. And this is just the power of tank stack against EMP. They EMP'd him. They s stopped all four ults from coming out. But there's just not enough damage to kill these people that they literally just waited for the hack to pass and just come back in with all of it. Even with the early kill onto the Moira, they were struggling to get the focus fire enough to drop the tanks. Once again, because they were really... Oh, and that's an early kill onto DM2, swapped over to the Junkrat. There's just, there just wasn't enough damage from the side of all clock. They had a tracer with the... So there's not enough damage to shred through tank's health. All the Big Doge did was back into the room together with two tanks just body blocking so much damage and sharing that aggro. And there's just nothing all fucked up. Oh, Diva bomb comes in. Oh, huge shadow. Huge shadow bomb bomb. The Diva bomb as they get knocked onto their ass. And, uh, Chainsaw is just cleaning up this fight, taking out the trace to as well. There goes Liam and Anna. It's just, it's just the pharmacy and. Suddenly enter once again a auto DC. It's just Twinks alone on the point as far as And this is actually a best of five series, isn't it? Yeah, it's best of five, oh, so this is best match is point. This is the match. And with that, Big Doge are going to the final. Big Doge so. has remained undefeated and secured themselves the final spot. Fortnite from now, they'll be playing against uh, yeah, the Ruda Hood or Codex once again. 
we have Saint Thor. Diva Bomb coming in. And there's just phenomenal plays from both teams. But uh, how do you deal with that sort of tank stack? It's 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 really hard. <laughs> Multiple ways. One, run your own tank stack. Two, okay, I can't actually think of other ways. You know, you just have to run your own tank stack or run something similar to a tank stack, but still have like Junkrat Reaper, maybe with Ryan Zari or something, something like that. I'm not too sure. It's, it's just it's not easy. Okay, the the easiest way ultimately is to run your own tank stack. Otherwise, maybe play for a map advantage on specific maps. So. Yeah, and now we come down to it, picking our MVP of the match. I want to give it to Rand. I'll just say that straight up there. He's done a phenomenal performance all night. I definitely agree with you there. Uh, I do think Chainsaw also had his moments, but once again, Ram the Rock with that, Winston with that Reinhardt, just every single map that they won, they could yeah. not have done it without his performance. Uh, the amount of quality shatters he was getting on his Reinhardt. His Earth Shatters, his pins, yeah. just his general dive timings and his ult usage on Winston of pushing people back and getting value from Winston or really. Uh, yeah, we can't I can't really argue over that. I think Ram Rock also deserves that MVP and he was the MVP last game. Like last week as well when they played. So Ramrock definitely picking up his play as one of the core members of his team. Uh, everything they do has to be built around him. There's just, they're just, if you think about it, there's not many other times where Big Doge have managed to get these insane plays and win games without Ram's presence. Yeah, I mean, the, the, there's been the occasional hero play from the DPS, but almost definitely. every success they've had has been off the back of their team. Definitely. So Ram the Rock just putting out that work. His he's making his presence felt, <clears throat> and it's interesting. It's really funny because Big Doge actually lose every single scrim they ever have. <laughs> really, it's unfortunate, but yes, they lose scrims to almost every single team they scrim, <laughs> but somehow manage as soon as they go into the actual game, they just win. And I don't really know how, but <laughs> I mean. I guess if that's how they can win. Okay. I'm um, complaining. <laughs> is everyone here? We're going to do a quick interview between two teams, the winning and the losing. So I'm going to get people fought in. The first yeah. one from. Um... Wait, are you just being serious? Yes. Hello, Hello Twig. Hey, Twigs. Hey, Twigs. Welcome to us. What's up? Um, We're supposed to give you a quick interview, all right? I don't actually have my questions asked, but further, the, the obvious thing I can ask you is how do you feel about what just happened? Uh, still good. It was fun. Especially for a random like players team to get together, uh, I feel like we came a, lo uh, a long way. Definitely. Do you feel like every member on your team has improved? Both as a, have, do you feel like you as a team has improved and player? Oh, for sure, man. Absolutely. Definitely. Um, what are your plans from here on? Um, just keep looking oh, to play okay. more competitive. Play more competitive. Whoa. Are you gonna? Do you plan to keep all the team you have? Right now, maybe keep a few members and try to make your own team for some other tournaments like the AOL. Yeah, uh, that'd be good. Because we have the, the team synergy down. Well, we're getting there with the team synergy. Yeah, definitely. Uh, it'd be good to see. I mean, we've improved so far, and it's only up from here as well. So it'd be good. Definitely. It's, well, been, it's been a pleasure to watch you guys. Well, congratulations on making it to the semifinals. I don't know if we're going to have a third place match off. Um, Maybe Kema can come and clarify that for us. Kema, do we plan to have a third place match off between the yeah. two losing teams? Well, the... because the fight, uh, it's the, it depends on the grand final team. Like the, the two top team grand final, they have to pick the time between Friday and Sunday, right? Definitely. And then, then we can work out the time after that for that. The oh, third like... place match off. All so... right. So, uh, once again, Twinks, at least you guys made it to the semifinals. Definitely well played there. Um, coming really close on multiple maps. Uh, huge improvement throughout the tournament. Uh, hopefully, you guys will can all get a time in and play a third place match off against one of the other teams, and you know maybe secure yourself at least the top three position. Yeah, that's it, man. <coughs> all right. Thanks for having me. Definitely, and we'll see you around.
What's up? And here we go, the, the leader representing from Big Dog, Transwell. Here we go, so I'm pretty interview with you guys. Pardon? And we have Chainsaw here. Ideally, let's be real here, everyone wants to actually listen to Ram, but we'll give Chainsaw the opportunity. Oh, well. No. As the team captain. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, captain, speak for us. How do you feel about what you, what you guys just said there? Uh, yeah, I feel quite good how we won. There were a couple of times where we slipped up, and obviously they played a very good Sombra on uh, Washpoint Gibraltar, which we really just had no answer to. But um, we will definitely be practicing against that going into the finals. So, yeah, I was quite happy with it. All right, I'll, I'll let Pyro take great. over over here. Well, great to hear it, and great performance from you guys today. Um, mm. Obviously, you guys, after... After Gibraltar favoured a very tank heavy lineup. Can we expect to see more of that in the uh, the best of seven grand final, or are we going to see something new from you guys yet again? Or is it best not to say here because you know, this may be watched by your opponents? I mean, like, we do have other strategies and other comps we can run other than tank stacks, so I don't know. You'll see. Ooh, <laughs> keeping it mysterious. Well, guess we'll have to tune into the Grand Finals match to find out. And hmm. um, how is how is the team feeling about the, the prospect of the best of seven Grand Final? It is an endurance log there. Um, hmm. Is that a concern of anyone, or do you got you guys pretty confident in your ability to stay focused and stay at the top of your form? No, we're not very concerned about the uh, grind so to speak, that it's going to be. We're more concerned of uh, our like comms keeping up throughout the whole thing and just general synergy. But for the most part, we're not that worried about it being a very long match. So, Okay, that's great to hear. All righty, yeah. So tell me, how do you feel about this tournament that you have all played so far? It's a great tournament, honestly. It's quite a lot of fun, really. Um, it got me into playing Overwatch again because I stopped <laughs> playing Overwatch because of the amount of toxicity and just the amount of people and throws and whatnot and plat and diamond. But uh, this tourney realistically has just got me back into it because it's so much fun working as a team and communicating. So, hmm. uh, what are your plans from here now after this tournament? Do you guys plan on? <coughs> Uh, we have been thinking about signing up for AAOL. Uh, we still have to find two DPS players, though, so that is that is a roadblock that we have to get past. But uh, yeah, I think you can. It, it's very viable for you guys to actually just get other DPS players from this tournament. They have been very good players mm. showing up, such as we just had Twinks before. Though he might actually be looking to stay as a team with his current team, but you can definitely ask him for that. Uh, also, I have to give mentions to Bloodlock and Hana Song from the Brutalhood. They have been phenomenal this entire tournament as well, playing way beyond their skill level that their rank puts them at. So definitely maybe contact them after the finals and try find 2 DPS and sign up for that tournament. It'll be great to see you guys keep playing. You guys have been building up that synergy really well, especially between you and Ravnarok. Mm. Just putting on that super strong tank frontline and that's what's making a huge difference between you guys and the other teams because there are other teams with really strong DPS players like the ones we have, but what sets us apart is the tank play. Yeah. And we can see that from just Ram's consistent performance, your consistent performance, and we can just really fuel the impact you put onto the games. And do you, do you feel like that... Honestly, do you feel like you guys are the ones carrying the team on your back? For me, it feels like it's an all-round effort because without the healers, Ram and I would just die almost instantly, and without Liz and Tudor, then we really wouldn't be getting the picks that we do. So if you ask me, it's a very all-rounded effort for the team. That's good to hear. Wow, that's, uh, that's a quick interview so far. Thank you everyone so much, especially Chanso and everyone else for expressing their opinion about tournament and stuff. About me, I'm so happy for you guys coming here and learn so much from this tournament. We also like, it's really hard for everyone of us, like, we're so be deciding, in my opinion, for like, some people asking us, like, so how are you gonna pick the MVP player from this tournament? So we think about like the player who improving a lot, 
get a lot of SR from Kong, but also like perform way better from the week one into the grand final again. So that's um, that's all I do so far. So I think, in my opinion, in the grand final game, we will pick the true MVP player from the entire tournament improving so far. Oh, by the way, we forgot. We forgot to pick the MVP from this uh, match. It. What you We actually it? have. We have all the. <laughs> We have mutually agreed on Ramnarok after his yeah, performance. Yeah, so you can show that. I just confess, I don't know. <laughs> but I'm sure, Raph. Raph Let's be real here. Okay. If we think about the first Nepal game, just think of how they played that. Uh, that was a really good team effort. Both teams played really well on the Nepal game. But we could just see the skill difference between the opposing team's like tank duo compared to our tank duo. Or compared to the duo of Big Doge. And... That just put out, they created so much space in those maps that that's why they secured those wins. Um, they did, however, drop Gibraltar, but on the Volskaya game, we just saw Around the Rock pop it off. Played the Reinhardt, gets all the shatters, gets the pins they need. We played Winston, gets the Winston all kills that they need. And what more do you want from a tank? He's making the space, he's getting the kills, he's making, he's getting value from his ult, and he's setting them up. So. There's really just not more to say about him. I mean, everyone else in the game has performed very well as well, but Ram's just stepping it up. Mm, indeed. Whew. Well, that's it for now. Um, it's not quite sick. Thank you so much, everyone, for coming. This is about time for closing the stream. Um, thank you so much once again. It's Kerima the hosting. We're coming along with Lunchbox. Thank you so much for your camera in service. I'll see you again next week as well. Uh, come along with us. We're on the panel desk with Casting, a Pirate Nerd, and G5. So, anyone, thank you so much. And before we go, just say something to you guys. Any about advertising, feel free to say so. Uh, anything from you, Pyro? I just wanted to say that uh, come join us next week where we'll have Draconics against the Brutahood for the other semi final match. Uh, which should also be a really great game. That will be really great because the last time they faced off, it was also a two to one matchup, um, and it was really close, if I remember correctly, or maybe I don't actually remember correctly. But regardless, both teams have actually shown huge improvements, uh, and I think that will be the game to watch. It should be much closer than plenty of the other games we've actually seen in this tournament. Uh, not saying that the other games weren't close. We definitely have had close, those like really close clutch moments by some players, and that was really good to watch. But I just can't wait to see a, like, a game between Brutahood and Draconix. That's going to be close the whole way. And I, I really can't tell right now which team is going to win. I could go with either one. Yeah, indeed. Um, everyone's going to win so much for next week, right? <laughs> Uh, well, one of the best things is so far, like, when you go down to the map 5, today, map 4 is really close, like, we, we, we can't think, like, our can really make it, and Big Doe have their nerve right there. Yeah. So, well, ah, anything from G5? Any advertising you want to show up or something? Not really, just hope that we get everyone come play tomorrow. Yes, I hope so. <laughs> I mean, not tomorrow, the next week. <laughs> Yeah, everyone who watching the stream, I'm looking forward to see you guys in the next week. Please, send up your timetable when you guys decide between your team and the enemy team. And if you want to reschedule, not playing on Friday from 8.30 p.m., feel free to let us know, because we want to give you guys a fair try from time, like today. So, okay, once again, thank you so much, and see ya! Thank you. Awesome.